Hey Internet, I'm back today to talk about another Shudder film. And Shudder, at this point, with the amount of your movies that I talk about, are you going to fucking sponsor me already? Like, get with the program. I don't know what you're doing. Clearly, with my immense following that I have here on the YouTube platform, you would love to give me some shout outs. What's going on? So today, I'm here to talk about another Shudder horror film that I felt like I heard a couple things about, but haven't heard talked about enough, and that is The Dark and the Wicked. So The Dark and the Wicked is directed by Brian Bertino, and it stars Marin Ireland and Michael Abbott Jr. And the story is about this brother and sister who their mother and father live on a secluded farm together, and their mother dies early on in the film, and they go out, they go out there to be with their father who is very sick and he's dying. And they get out to the farm and some weird stuff starts happening. And the film just kind of just blows up and continues to get more anxiety inducing. So yeah, uh, I saw a lot of mixed reviews about this online and I'm not really sure why. As far as like slow burn atmospheric horror movies, this did it for me. There is some like legitimately terrifying imagery in this film. Performances are really good. They uh, Both of the characters have kind of like a hokey southern accent, which at first was kind of hard for me to get into a little bit, but I got past it pretty quickly because of just how incredibly well shot and atmospheric that this movie is. The movie is very eerie. The sound design especially really contributes to that. And what I like about this movie is there's really no jump scares, but there is a lot of the camera holding on stuff that you as an audience member don't want to look at. A lot of it reminded me of like Hereditary when you get to that third act with Ari Aster and you see like Tony Collette in the corner of the room and just like those little things where it's not shit popping out at you, but it's the camera holding on imagery that you don't really want to look at in the first place. That's what I really liked about it was that, you know, there's this really like slow build up to these horrifying moments. And then on top of that, you have this underlying family drama. I mean, you have a brother and sister who they clearly have a relationship and they were close at one point, but this dynamic between them and their parents, their father's health deteriorating, their mother passing away, there's this really great family trauma element underneath all of this. And I see some people complaining about that, but it's like, do you really always want really elevated supernatural horror with no depth to it? I mean, I really enjoy when directors and screenwriters especially take real life experience and tie that in with horror because it makes it more impactful. This film in the third act has some moments that are like genuinely unsettling and upsetting because of how real these people feel. They feel like human beings. They feel like people who we're rooting for and that we want to feel like we want to succeed. We want to see them out of these situations. And when things start to get worse for them and when things begin to unravel more and more, you just feel terrible for them. And that's what I liked about this movie, that real element of family drama. Like I said, the movie is really well shot. It's shot in this secluded location on this farm. So there's a lot of really wide angle lenses kind of showing the outdoors. Information is revealed to you as an audience member. It's always put in the frame, but it's not like in a jump scare-esque manner. It's just like put there and you're staring at it and it just makes you unsettled. You're like, get away, get away, get away. But it's done and executed so well and I really enjoyed just being with these characters and watching this decline of their mental health while this is going on because they're out there together. They haven't been in this place for a while. Their father's mental health is pretty much completely deteriorated because he's unresponsive. He's pretty much comatose. He's, he sleeps. There's a nurse that comes during the day to take care of him. And then at nighttime, it's left up to them to watch him and take, take care of him. But none of them really know what to do because uh, the brother has a family with kids at home and he's kind of left to be with them. And then the sister who is there, you know, she's got her own life outside of that. They're both trying to figure out like, how can we stay here and take care of dad? Because are we gonna be able to afford to get a full-time nurse that can watch him all the time? And there's all these different elements at play about that family drama that just make you hurt for these people more. And that's what I liked about this movie is that it wasn't just the scary shit, it was the 
real drama that these people were experiencing and the trauma that they were feeling because of these things that have occurred. Yeah, Brian Bertino directed the original Strangers and also an A24 film called The Monster. I have not seen either one of those movies. I know The Strangers is one that a lot of people talk about being a horror classic and there's a lot of people that say The Strangers is hot garbage. I've never seen it, but after watching Dark and the Wicked, I would be interested to see his other two works because this type of movie is the kind of movie that I really enjoy. I like slow burn atmospheric horror movies. There's a lot of people who would just say boring, but I think it's character development. I mean, you know, not everything is going to jump right into it and say jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, or, you know, drop you into a situation where there's no build up where you don't care about the characters. I would much rather give a shit about the people on screen than just have scary shit thrown in my face. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Dark and the Wicked. I thought it was really good. It's streaming over on Shudder right now. I think you guys should definitely check it out if you haven't seen it yet. As always, guys, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot. It lets me know what type of content you're looking for, what kind of material you'd like to see in the near future. I've got a lot of videos planned. As always, thanks so much for watching, Internet, and have a great rest of your day.